Hi everybody, old guy here. Well, Monday is Halloween, and in honor of that, here are ten books that scared me. Um, these are not necessarily horror novels or monster ghost stories or anything like that. At least one of them is non-fiction, and the rest are all over the genre palette. With, yeah, a couple of ghost stories thrown in, but it doesn't have to be horror to be scary. Real life is scary enough. Now, it has been a while since anything truly scared me. Amused me, annoyed me, appalled me, yeah. I get a lot of that these days, but not really scared. I mean, come on, I used to live in New Jersey. So, a lot of these are going to be older titles, and not the usual suspects like The Exorcist and other well-knowns, which uh, I have probably touched on somewhere else. So, without further ado, and in no particular order. Number 10, The Monk by Matthew Lewis. Published in 1796, this is a lurid and downright terrifying story of soul corruption by his satanic majesty himself. Some of the imagery is just downright hair-raising, and you'll be amazed that a novel so old could be so graphic. When the monk Ambrosio finally gets his long overdue comeuppance, <laughs> whoa! Number 9. Saint Leon by William Godwin. Another 18th century Gothic novel written by one of my favorite characters in history, Mary Shelley's father. This novel extols the horrors of immortality and the Philosopher's Stone. Believe me, you don't want either. Treblinka by Jean-Francois Steiner. Yeah, I think I did that right. I actually read this sometime in the uh, mid-60s when it was serialized or excerpted in either Look or Life magazine. Uh, I can't remember which, and I can't find a reference in Google saying which or when, but it was my first exposure to the graphic horrors of the Holocaust. Now, sure, I knew about it. Uh, my dad's World War II unit was the first American one to discover a concentration camp, Ordruff. He never really talked about it, but uh, when he died, I discovered some photographs he had taken shortly after his unit breached the gate, and well, well, I've never actually read the book itself, which many people consider a fiction novel because of the style, but the ex excerpted chapters I did read remain with me to this day. Number seven. No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. This novel is actually more frightening to a subset of readers, those in law enforcement. Now, not a lot scares these people either. I mean, when you've been to crime scenes and autopsies, you learn pretty fast how awful people can be to each other. But there's always been a sense of cops and robbers, you know, good guys and bad guys, who know that they're good guys and bad guys, and follow a set of unwritten rules so things don't get too much out of hand. They're a set of old men rules. But now we have the Joker. Those people who simply want to watch the world burn like Anton Shagir, the soulless, black-hearted hitman of this novel. He is a monster, and we're still not ready for these monsters. Number six, 
Jaws by Peter Benchley. Speaking of monsters, the great white shark in this novel is one you could actually encounter. Indeed, it's based on an actual shark attack in 1916, the Matawan Man-Eater, which happened not too far from where I lived in New Jersey. Now, I didn't really think about sharks before this book. Had one surface near my rowboat in the bay outside Long Beach once. But after reading this, okay. Number five, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Rather tame by today's standards, but this tale of the cougar and dark carnival that trades in souls made my 13-year-old hair stand on end especially since I wasn't so sure that I would have voluntarily gotten off the carousel of time. Number four, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. If you still hold on to the fiction that children are naturally good and loving, then you need to read this classic story of English schoolboys stranded on an island with no adult supervision. The speed with which civilization breaks down and the bullies fall into barbarism is a cautionary tale. Remember, it takes centuries to build civilization, just one night to lose it. Number three. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. On the other end from stranded schoolboys are schoolboys deliberately left to their own devices when society no longer maintains any kind of standards. When bullies and criminals realize they can do anything they want with little consequence, Life gets scary. Number two, Come Nineveh, Come Tyre by Alan Drury. Somewhat turgid and paranoid as all get out, this is one of three sequels to Alan Drury's Advise and Consent, two of which sequels are alternates to each other. Don't ask. The last part of this book is one of the most frightening depictions of a Soviet Union takeover of the United States and well worth enduring the rest of the novel. And number one, The 900 Days by Harrison E. Salisbury. Now, I actually read this in a Reader's Digest condensed book version in the 60s, and it shook me up. Uh, this is a graphic telling of the siege of Stalingrad. Between the Nazis and the Stalinists, the citizens really didn't know who to fear most. The description of what's found when the snowbanks melt off the sidewalk will curl your hair. Okay, that's it. So if you need a scare this Halloween, grab one of those. Old guy here. See you later.